and it's hi Jamie hi Donna how are you I'm I'm good I you know what we you and I've already gone through this I'm not gonna like play it up like this is our, our <laughs> very first time but um so guys look I was just talking to Jamie because he's my friend and he's this excellent podcast and I I thought you know what I want to do more podcasts, so why not ask a podcaster, what can I be doing as a potential guest to get on more podcasts? And Jamie hit me with so much value. I, I said, let's, let's turn on this camera and let's record this for uh, posterity. So, <laughs> so Jamie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over to you. Sure. You know, if, if a per there's an expert out there who wants to be on more podcasts, mm -hmm. you as a podcaster, who has a very successful podcast. You want to say the name? Yes, yeah, Stop Riding the Pine. <laughs> Stop Riding the Pine. I love it. <laughs> a little baseball reference. Yeah. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baseball reference. They, they used to make the benches out of wood. They make them out of plastic now, but out of wood. And so the, the reason I came up with that is a sports analogy. You got to get off the bench. Get in the game. So Get in the game. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so how can I get into the game? How can I, how can I be on more podcasts? And how can an expert who's out there who wants to be on more kept podcasts, what can they be doing? Well, there's, yeah, I, I love this question um, because a lot of people, they hear about podcasts, you know, they know about podcasts, but they don't really know what a podcast can do for them. And um, being in podcasting or having my own show for now over three years, we even have a podcasting company where we, where we help people with their podcasts. So we really have a good idea around podcasting, what it's doing, where it's been, where it's going, all that stuff. So there's a lot of really cool companies out there um, like uh, podcastguests.com. There's also one, my good friends, Tom Schwab and Dan Moyle over at Interview Valet. And what they do, companies like this, is they actually have a list of, of um uh, podcasters that they'll send out on your behalf and get you booked on those shows. So they're in essence like concierge booking services for podcasting. Okay. Uh, now, sometimes there's fees associated with that. So there is the grassroots level as well, which I think actually um, is, I don't want to say better, but um, it's that whole relationship building thing. If you want to go be on someone's show, you, I, I recommend writing an email to them and there's templates out there. I shared one with you yeah. um, where you can, you can write an email and kind of put little, a little bio about yourself or a little quick overview or you express, Hey, I listened to their show, which I think is really important. I was going to say, I think rather than just like blast everybody, at least do a little due diligence and yeah. make sure that, you like them, they'll like you, the message is on point. And, and actually listen to the show. Don't just say that. <laughs> um, because you want to make sure that you go on a show with an audience that's conducive for whatever product or service you're working with or however you think you can best help that audience. I think if you approach it from that standpoint, it's really good. So there's a couple of ways that you can also do this and how to find podcasts. And um, the best way, I think, Mm -hmm. um, with over 450,000 RSS feeds going out a month is iTunes. Um, they right. have, yeah. They have a huge library. And one of the best ways is if you have um, an iTunes account, mm -hmm. um, you can go on to um, iTunes in the podcast area. And it's, it's, we can even put a link up there if this might help people, but it's itunes.apple.com forward slash, you know, it's a long thing. Right. But you, you go to the categories, and depending on what category you're interested in, is it management and marketing, is it investing, is it career, is it business news, is it comedy, education, they have all these different... Um, so think in terms of your, your target audience, the, the people that you, who are interested in your message, what, 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 what podcast would they be listening to? What area within iTunes would they be on? So if, if my listeners would be in management and marketing because I interview thought leaders and entrepreneurs, people like you, <laughs> authors. Um, and so I, my listeners, my opiners would go into the management and marketing area or possibly the technology or podcast area. And um, if you go and you just type, go into management and marketing, go into that, you'll see thousands of shows in there. Um, HBRI Digcast, Jocko Podcast, The Gary V Audio Experience, Ty Lopez Show, mm -hmm. Andy Stanley, The Smart Passive Income, Entrepreneurs on Fire. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. So, now would you would you suggest? I mean, should we start with Gary V, or do you think it's better to work your way up? Go for Gary it. V? Nope. 
Nope, not at all. I say go for it. You never know what's going to happen. I don't. I don't say work your way up. I say just do it. Um, I was I was recently um, on a show. John Lee Dumas. He has a show called EO Fire with 1.5 million people um, download uh, his yeah. episodes every single month, and that I was fortunate in, in having one of his friends kind of introduce it. So it was kind of a soft introduction. But I still just reached out. I didn't. I didn't really, you know, have a huge audience. So for those people that are interested in being on really big shows like that, I just say go for it. Uh, and, and, and you told me before when we were just chatting earlier, you'd said that you had a friend who who just he all he did was podcast as his as his marketing, and his results were outrageous. Unbelievable. Yeah, he he leads a mastermind group. I think there's. N- 90 people in the mastermind group now all paying him monthly Mm -hmm. and the only advertising or marketing he did was to go on other people's podcasts and he went on over 400 different podcasts over the course of two years but still and he's still going on those shows yeah just built up a huge following it's it's amazing And, and what i like about that too is i mean i'm always thinking oh i need to have a podcast i want to have a podcast it's hard it's hard to run a business i mean and you run even more businesses than i do so i should not be complaining here but it's hard to have a family and run a business and then have like a, a weekly podcast fine it's hard so maybe rather than saying hey let me put put more noise out there maybe just join the noise that's already taking place so try to just become that guest and, and get on as many as you can and it's almost probably a little easier than trying to come up with your own podcast yourself exactly I, 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 I think yeah if you don't want to do your own podcast this is probably in my opinion um, the most surely cost-effective way because um, here's the other thing though it's a huge time saver if you have your own show Mm-hmm. So an hour long show, depending on, you know, a couple of things here and there, it's probably going to take you about another four hours to edit it and write the show notes and pr- publish it and share it on social. Mm-hmm. I mean, it takes a while. Yeah. If you think about it this way, you go do the interview, you're done. That yeah. show, they do all the work and they send it out for you. Now you want to share it, of course. Of course. And is there anything that like, a, a, as, as a podcast guy, you know, I mean, you've got your podcast, what could a guest do that would make you love them? like really make you love them and want to make you make you want to bring them back again like a second time maybe like you know me <laughs> like you yes of course so what could i be doing to make your life as that podcaster you know better what could i as a guest do well um it, it what's really cool is it, it, like you I, I you're a great example um we first talked three years ago no. um which is crazy when i when i first started and you gave a lot of information a lot of help to my listeners that i refer to uh, affectionately refer to them as the opiners because <laughs> they make the you know their own opinions but but what's really cool is since we've met last time you've gone on oh my gosh you you've added another family member mm-hmm. uh, you've written another book i mean if over I don't know five thousand profiles that you've written, mm-hmm. I mean that's just amazing. So that's the kind of thing that I would love to have you back on the show for because it demonstrates everything about my show, what I'm trying to do. Because the people that are listening to us, they get stuck. You know, they they're looking for tips and strategies and motivation, and that's why I have thought leaders like you, authors like you on because your story is compelling. You've been there, you've done that. So now you can share. So so then what I'm hearing is once you have that relationship with a podcaster, don't lose it, stay Mm -hmm. in touch with the people and then, you know, write them back maybe a year later or or two years later. I've got, I've got these new things that we can talk about. And so if they had that great interview with you the first time, they're going to be more apt to bring you back, especially if you're bringing more to the table. Exactly. And probably the number one thing in podcasting um, to get on other shows is asking for referrals from podcast hosts. Oh, I never thought of that, Jamie. Never thought of that. So, so if a huge a podcast, and then, and we had a great interview, I can then say to the podcast host, hey, do you have any friends who are also doing this that I could be on their show? Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and you'll see in the podcast industry, a lot of podcasters 
that typically what happens in, in, in an interview type scenario, you have your pre-interview, you kind of explain it, then you have the podcast, then you have your post interview. Yeah. In that post interview, most of the time you'll hear that podcaster ask, what can I do to help even more? And I do. Um, yeah. And so a lot of times podcast guests are looking to get on other shows. So I'll send out emails to a couple of my buddies that have similar shows or similar audiences, I should yeah. say to introduce them and then they know other people and they know other people and they know other people. And that's that warm introduction I was yeah. talking about earlier. Okay. So then, all right. So like totally to recap, first off, know that, know that this is marketing. This is going to help you grow your business. Uh, it's the way to get your, to get the word out. So it's, it's okay to go the grass approach, but you might also consider putting some money into this. And if you do want to put some money into it, um, it was podcast guests, Dot com great database you didn't what was the other one interviewvalet.com Interview my, my personal favorite yeah they're amazing so you know some money into it is not a bad you know it's not a bad there's going to be an ROI so it's not a bad investment uh, go to itunes.com look at their uh, their index their their table of contents of, of the different uh, podcasts that are out there go into your area where your uh, target audience would be watching and and see who's there and then hit them up with an email right just just send exactly. out the host an email saying hey this is who i am this is what i do this is my value mm -hmm. and exactly. so yeah and then once you're on the show you're going to get some and 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 you know ask the host say who else do you know who who else can you can you help me uh, reach out to and a lot of times those hosts will be happy to to help but i think on the flip side as a guest you better do everything you can to market that podcast you yeah. know help him just or help her just like they're helping you so they're giving you that 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 uh soapbox help them find more listeners you know and so do what you can to market you know email your list put it out on social media help these people as well. One other thing too, especially for people that are, um, you know, going to be watching this video and, and you, a lot of, a lot of times you may have a video page or a, a, a resource or a media page. Yeah. And so if you can start building up a library of shows that you've been on, it's just like television shows. You people have had those clips of, I think you've had, you've been on TV where you had the, the you know, the video of you being on TV. You can do the same thing with podcasting. And that basically is great social proof. It lets people know that are coming to you that, hey, I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Look at all these shows I've been on. Here's a, <laughs> a hello, a sizzle reel for the yes. podcast. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there you go. There we go. I never <laughs> even considered that. That's another one. Like, amazing. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this was awesome. All right. Yeah. So. My website is linkedin-makeover.com if you want to uh, get your profiles written. Jamie, you take it from here. What do, what do you want people to know about you? Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, go to Slapshot Studio if you want to learn more about websites. We do VAs at bottleneck.online, and we're hosting my first live event in St. Louis, uh, 3daymba.com.net, 3daymba.net. Oh, that's fascinating. A little bit more info on that because that's really fascinating. Yeah, so what we're going to do is for MBA stands for Masters of Business Academy. So we're going to do a three day live conference. And um, I've had a lot of challenges in the past by going to events because you go to the events, you learn cool stuff, but then what happens? You kind of got to figure it out. Yeah. So we're doing an 18 week continuity program with all the speakers. So you go and you learn everything about business from legal to accounting to marketing to mindset, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then once they leave, um, each week, that speaker that's covered that topic will go through, and by the end of that 18 weeks, hopefully, they will have improved their brick and mortar or online business. Oh my gosh, that's that is awesome! So it's not like this one-time hit, but this is like follow-up. It's sustainability. It's forcing these people to get into the game and actually do what they. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>